Poem number two. Mercenary talk. The worst part about being a semi-psychotic mercenary is that people are afraid of you. So when you kill someone's favorite bulldog, half because you had a small lust for blood to quench, half because the ugly mug growled at you for no reason, you don't get much love for that. Or business. You see, a mercenary is someone who makes his living off of being paid muscle. So if you know how to use a sword and kill, you're golden. That's what I do for work. It's not an easy way of living. Example, one time I had a contract to kill some bandits. And when I returned to the farmer that hired me, he paid me and told me to never come back. Another time I butchered a kidnapper and, rich and rescued this insanely hot Spanish chick who was tied up in a chair by ropes. I cut her free, and she stands up, takes the dead man's sword, and says, All right, ugly, if you take one step closer to me, I'll gut you like the swine you are. You hear me? You see, a mercenary is someone that works to make other people's lives easier. But as for you, you're a tool, and you may as well be a monster. But you learn that you have to accept the fact that this is the way things are going to be. And you start to not care anymore. And you don't get emotionally invested into anyone because of it. Everyone you meet just becomes part of the background. And you lose a part of you because of that. I realized something was wrong with me. When I couldn't find the motivation to do anything. When I started visiting bars just to hear voices. When I started talking to myself. Because it was hard to know how to hold a conversation. When you're seen as insignificant. When using my blade became the only thing that gave my life purpose. When I saw that I was so disconnected from everyone around me. That when I did open my mouth to speak. The only thing that would come out was either nothing or the words of an apathetic stranger. A stranger who only knows how to be bitter, short, or sarcastic. So it's becoming harder for me to build relationships with anyone. And since I don't know how to, I don't try anymore. And sometimes that works. Other times, while I'm dislodging my bloody claymore from a werewolf's pitiful pancreas, watching his never-ending stream of blood pour into the grass and sparkle, I start to realize how pointless my own life is. And I think on the fact that I can fight everyone else's battles but my own. And it gets to me. You know, sometimes I wish that I had a contract on my own head just to give someone, just to have someone to pay attention to me for longer than a single moment. You know, to have someone take the time out of their day to stop me in the shadows, spring up out of the bushes one afternoon and try to take a swing at me, I'd casually brush her off and then she'd change her stance without giving me enough time to process it and her eyes would meet mine, but she wouldn't spend the first half of the encounter hesitating. She'd freaking lash at me with blind strikes and eventually she'd cut right through my chest plate and find the vulnerable spot I never knew I had and exploit it, forcing me to spill my guts onto the floor, forcing my heavy mind, body, and spirit into her hands. And that'd be a good thing, because I sure as hell don't know how to hold them anymore. And I'd be thankful, because it'd be the first time someone would have made me feel something in a long time.